Uh, I'm doing this video for you, my kids, and, and my grandchildren. I wanted to do something special uh, before I died and tell you a little bit about my life before you came into my life and some of the things that have happened since. And uh, I'm going to show albums and pictures and as much of my life as I can recall. So, uh, I want to show you a photograph of your, your grandparents. This is Louis and Sophie Bernstein. This is where it all began, my parents. My father was from Russia, and my mother was born in this country shortly after her folks came over from Austria. Uh, my father had 11 children in his family, as far as I know, and maybe four came over to this country. And my mother had uh, five, five siblings. Uh, there were two, two brothers and three sisters. And I guess you didn't know any of them, uh, but they were part of my life when I was young. Uh, I was born in Providence, Rhode Island in 1932, an identical twin, and I guess you know that. Uh, and my sister also had five children, like I did. Uh, my folks were uh, not terribly rich. We lived uh, in near the south end of Providence. Uh, I remember we lived uh, near some railroad tracks and near some woods where I played because in those days you could go out and play in the woods and not have to worry about child molesters. And uh, then uh, the first school I went to was Sackett Street School. I remember that very clearly. What year was this? Uh, the year, I guess I, let's see, I was born in 1932, and I guess I started school at five or six. So I guess that would have brought that up to 1937. And uh, I, I guess that was pre-war days. That was before the Second World War. But uh, my childhood was, I guess, ordinary. <laughs> Uh, except for the fact that I was a twin, which uh, when we were very, very young, I, I guess we received a lot of attention because we had blonde curls and, and I guess, according to my older sister, uh, Bernice, uh, we hated attention. We hated being looked at because so many people did uh, make comments about it, twins. and. Uh, I, re I remember uh, early on in school, uh, I, I was, I guess, very, very shy, and I would hear from people, are you the quiet twin? And so I guess I didn't do much talking in those days, but I've ma made up for it ever since. And so you were the Bernstein twins? We were the Bernstein twins, uh, and yeah. I guess... I, my, I, I'm Natalie, and she was Ann Martha until we turned into our teens when we became Nikki and Mickey. And, uh, what do you mean, Nikki and Nikki? Well, it, it, when you become a teenager, I guess it's, it's the time when you try to change the way you are. You want a different identity, and uh, I guess I liked the name Nikki better than Natalie, and she liked the name Mickey better than M. Arthur, and they sounded more like twins na twin names than Natalie and Ann Martha. Uh, our oldest sister Bernice is six years older, and she didn't. She had a room to herself, and she didn't like us coming into her room. Uh, she didn't like us looking through her clothes in her closet. She she was act she acted like the queen bee. And I guess she was because she was six years older. Uh, so you, it was just the three of you? So uh, there were just three, three children. We, we had cats and I guess a few pets. 
uh, some many years later, when I was grown up and I visited an old childhood friend in Florida, she reminded me about a turtle I had. We didn't have many dolls uh, or, uh, or many toys, but uh, I, I, I guess we had enough. We had plenty of food on the table, uh, maybe too much. Uh, seems like my mother wanted us to eat a lot or thought we were very, very skinny and needed to eat more. So, uh, you know, we always had to finish what was on our plate. And my father, coming up, having been from Russia in the old country, I remember him saying, be quiet, be quiet. <laughs> he, he didn't like noise at the table. Uh, I remember Thanksgiving dinners uh, when my mother's family, uh, well, actually it was my father's family who lived in Providence, would come and visit, and they were very, perhaps the only times I really, really loved was Thanksgiving because uh, the family would come over and we'd sit around a big table and my mother would make plenty of food. Uh, I really did enjoy that. and. She had a sister, Flora, and we would take the train to New York for Christmas. And even though we were Jewish, she had a Christmas tree and said, don't tell Grandpa. <laughs> what, did, what did she live on? What street in New York? Uh, I actually, I, she lived in, my Aunt Flora lived in Brooklyn, but I don't even recall where the, the exact street because my memory is now fading. I remember the subways and... My grandfather lived in the poor uh, section of the Bronx. Uh, I, I, I remember that he would come to the door in his uh, smoking jacket from, that he brought from Austria. He, he looked very, very uh, fancy, but he lived in a poor neighborhood. He was just a tailor, and uh, I never knew uh, my real grandmother was, uh, a, he had remarried uh, my aunt, and we called her Aunt Hattie. And she was a chubby lady. I remember her always laughing, and also they'd bring out all this food, and we'd eat plenty of food. And let me, you know, when you're 66, going to be 67, there's a lot to remember in the past. I, uh, as I say, I really love Thanksgiving and Christmas, and I, I don't think we had too much entertainment. We didn't have TV until I think I was a teenager, so we listened to the radio, and we had our favorite shows, and I did a lot of artwork. I was very good at our art and spent a lot of time in my bedroom, so I did a lot of drawing. In fact, when I was 10, I received a scholarship from the Rhode Island School of Design, uh, because I won a contest, and that was a nice feather in my cap. I, uh, I, I remember uh, in my childhood, uh, uh, I, I don't think I was a terribly happy child, although we weren't mistreated. Uh, I, I guess my mother, she didn't go out to work, uh, my father liked her staying at home, and in those days, uh, mother stayed at home. She did make wonderful Toll House cookies. I do remember coming home from school and finding cookies, which I guess my children didn't find because their mother was busy roller skating in Venice. <laughs> and you didn't think I was a lousy cook, so that didn't help either, but... Uh, uh, one of the big things, the big memories of my childhood was that we lived, when we lived on Hamilton Street, that was the second house. Uh, well, it was, it was in Providence, Rhode Island. It was in, uh, uh, it was a three, I think a three family house. And the Bonman Bailey Circus would come every year and they would come down the street all these wonderful people, these the animals, they would get off the train and march down the street, and I felt so lucky uh, to be able to see these people right, right in my neighborhood, right there on our street. And the, we only received one big spanking when I was when we were young. We went to see the the, the circus, and we ran 
underneath the tents to see the freaks and the little things. They don't have those freaks today in, in the circus, but uh, I guess my mother was frantic because I remember my twin and I were coming out from underneath the tent and she grabbed us when she saw us and gave us a mighty big spanking. We might have been six or seven years old. I also remember some young man trying to teach me how to steal. <laughs> So I guess, uh, you know, we had these unsavory characters even in those days. But I was generally a, a good kid, not a problem, until I turned a teenager, and I sure. guess everything changed. Uh, what happened? What uh, well, I remember uh, when we went to, we called it junior high school. It was Roger Williams Junior High School, and... It was a tough neighborhood. It would have been like downtown L.A., I guess, in those days. And they were rough kids, and it was scary. We lived near the projects, and, you know, we knew a lot of those, you know, kids, and they were my friends. So uh, I, I didn't have rich friends but in those days. They were just ordinary people. But anyway, uh, it was, I remember it was the war years. I remember sitting on the steps of the junior high school when the atom bomb went off, and I remember this girlfriend saying, the world will never be the same. I'm even getting goosebumps thinking about it now because she was only like uh, early teens when she made that comment. And I remember the war years because we lived in a in a in Providence and we had Quonset Point and there were sailors everywhere, uniforms everywhere, there were uh, soldiers everywhere, there were stars in the window when fellows were killed. Uh, another another. Uh, I want to talk about Narragansett Pier, Rhode Island, since that's where my folks would take us in the summer. We would go for a week or two to Narragansett, and it was just a beautiful place uh, on the Atlantic. And I, I just do have wonderful memories of Narragansett. I love the water, I love the waves, I love the people, uh, and I love the lifeguards. And I, I uh, remember one time I had gone off with one of the lifeguards when I was a young teenager, and we had gone way up the beach. And in fact, he had to pull me back because we were in such a uh, heavy current that I could my body I couldn't swim. I wasn't strong enough to go against the current. And by the time we came back to the the pavilion. Uh, the whole beach was empty, but my mother and my father and a whole bunch of people were on the pavilion thinking that I had drowned in the ocean because they didn't know where I was. And that was a bit upsetting, but here I am quite alive. Uh, as a teenager, I guess I was a bit wild. I, I, I don't like telling you this, but I was wild. I upset my mother a lot when I discovered boys, and uh, I went after the wild ones with the the, the cars, and uh, I, I was heavy into dating and meeting guys and going to dances, uh, but I also worked. Uh, yeah, but, but is that what wild is or was back then, just going to dances and meeting boys? Well... Not the same thing as today. I, I, I was wild in the way that um, if, if my mother wanted me home early, I, I knew I was supposed to be home early, but I would get home later. And uh, I, I did a lot of things on the sneak. I was smoking at 13 and, and drinking. They did allow you to go into bars or nightclubs. It was... I guess part of the lifestyle with the, the war going on for people to smoke and drink, and I did all of that. Uh, I ran away when I was a little kid. I remember wanting to scare my mother because I was so unhappy. How old were you? When you I, away? I think the first time, maybe it was about seven or eight. I, I can't remember. I do remember that I was, my mother, I took piano lessons because my mother had a piano and she wanted somebody to play it. 
And I remember one time I was, my le- my, I was supposed to have a lesson, but I was so upset with my mother, I ran off to a friend's place, and uh, it was my piano teacher who found me walking and down the street and asked me what happened and wanted to take me back, and I told him I would never go back. I did. I went back. And you ran away more than you I did. I... Uh, uh, yeah, I, I guess I ran away another time, and I, but I was over a friend's house, and when my mother called over there, uh, I told the friend to tell my mother I wasn't there, and I'm sure she was very upset. And I, and I, uh, I guess I was upset f- with my friend for doing as I had asked her, but I, I did show up, I guess, by nightfall. But... Uh, uh, I, as I say, I was always unhappy in that house. My mother was very, very critical, and she had plastic on the couches, and it seemed like the chocolate was always locked up for the company. And she, the, they played cards, and it seemed like their social life. Today I can see they were very dull people, <laughs> but uh, they, they, you know, both my, both my parents... Uh, had uh, quite a quite a few friends. I, I particularly know that because uh, when they both died, I could not believe all the people who showed up for the funerals. The both of them, particularly my father, who was a very quiet man. A, a lot of people, a lot of people, kept saying, "What a nice guy!" And I didn't know their faces. My dad was an insurance man. Worked for the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company for. 40 years, he got the watch and the shaft, and he was very humble and very quiet and never abused us except for telling us to be quiet. I remember him sitting in a big old armchair with his newspaper, and I guess he smoked cigars when he was younger, but he was a gentleman. I remember him tying my ice skates. He would take us to the outside pond because Province Rhode Island is very cold in the winter and we would go ice skating and he would tie our shoe, my, my shoelaces. I think that's why I ended up loving uh, ice skating because uh, that's one memory I have of my dad and he would always give us quarters to, to buy ice cream cones. He, he, that was his gift to us was to buy an ice cream cone. He, he was nine years older than my mother, and uh, I always remember him sitting in a car, taking her to buy bread, and he just was a, a really nice guy. And my mother, I see today, was the heavy, because my dad would say, go ask your mother if you would ask him something. Uh, well, in, in the war, uh, I remember they rationed sugar, and uh, we had air raid sirens go off, and we'd have to go in our houses. Uh, it wasn't a land of plenty, but uh, there were still some good times. I, I remember uh, in my teenage years, uh, the, the biggest argument I ever had with my twin, I said to her, I... Uh, I was interested in a fellow that was in the service, and he was a lot older than me. I think I was 13, and he was already in his 20s. (laughs) And I didn't understand uh, why my mother didn't want me to be with him. And my twin said, well, you, you like Josh, but I like Hank. So you leave him alone. She, she was claiming her territory of the younger brother, who was more towards our age. But as wild as I was, I went for the older guy. And <laughs> uh, today I understand why my mother uh, w- wouldn't want a young daughter with a 22-year-old, especially a fellow who had already been away at war. and. I must admit, today, uh, those fellows that went to war when they came back were a lot more mature than guys you would see 
today because they had been through so much and they were pretty fast with with everything, with drinking, with sex, with smoking. So times were quite different and uh, I, uh, I'm, I want to go back to, uh, uh, oh, I started working when I, I guess I was babysitting when I was 11 for the French teacher, and I, I really hated that, sitting in a house, a strange house, by myself. They didn't have TV, so uh, it was very boring. Did you volunteer? Or did you I, volunteer? No, I was being paid 50 cents an hour to... Uh, uh, for my time, but I remember one of uh, one of the young men who had come back. Some of the fellows came back to high school because they went to war very young, and he told me I, he was an orphan. I remember him telling me I could get a job at this inn, this hotel actually, da 